decided to head back to Tidmouth Sheds, since we needed a place to rest for the night, as well as a place to us top him about. What the heck is going on? We still remain the goal of protecting Toby and Fireface, so Thomas was coupled up to the back of Toby. Luckily, we arrived at Tidmouth Shed safely, and Toby, Edward and Thomas were tucked away in the sheds. We took some wood we found and made a bonfire outside, and the four of us gathered around it, as Topham explained the answers to all the questions we've been asking for a while. He was at Tidmouth Station when the power plant exploded and was waiting patiently in his office for James's train to arrive. He headed out of his office at the sound of an engine's whistle, just in time to see James and Toby arrive. As he prepared to board the passenger train, he heard sirens in the distance followed by a huge blast. He covered his ears tightly as the passengers crowded into James's coaches. After Toby went to retrieve Henrietta, James departed, leaving half of his coaches behind at the platform. With nowhere to run, Topman prepared for the worst. His top hat was blown off of his head before he dropped to the ground, followed by a shower of shattered glass. Luckily, Topham was for the most part unharmed by the falling glass, but the other passengers weren't so lucky. He got up, grabbed his head back, his vision blurry, ears ringing, heart racing, and he started to look around. He noticed a passenger bleeding heavily from his face, and the controller panicked and ran to the parking lot beside the station where his car was located. He entered his car, and he sped off in the direction of Tidmouth Sheds. All he was thinking about was the well-being of his beloved engines. He had to find out what or who had caused this, and where his engines were located. The road was rough, probably from the subway. It wasn't long before Sir Topham had hit a pothole. The car seemed stuck, so he got out, had a look at it, and noticed the tire was flat. He was frustrated and worried at the same time. He wished that he hadn't left his spare tire at home. At this moment, he had no choice but to walk to a nearby workman's hut. It was constructed not so long ago. It took him a little while to get there, but he was happy to see it. He found food, water, a bed, and a flashlight. So Topham decided to spend the next three days in the hut while he was thinking and planning his next move. He made the decision to leave on the morning of July 7th. Topham started his trek towards Tidmouth Sheds. It was a bit of a walk without his car. As he was walking, he could see Tidmouth Sheds come into view. As he arrived, he could hear strange moaning and groaning, along with the saddened cries of an engine coming from the sheds. He also noticed some mutated trucks jammed into the turntable as he walked past He was shocked to see what had happened to Thomas. Topham took a moment and comforted the poor tank engine and told him he could help him. He spent the night in Thomas's cab as Topham cuddled up in Thomas. They talked for hours about their experiences during the fallout until they fell asleep. The morning was quick to arrive as Topham woke up really early as the sun started to rise. He got to work removing the mutated trucks from the turntable. Afterwards, he came back to Thomas. Topham then released Thomas's brakes and rolled him over to the water tower. After he heard the sound of an engine coming, he hid in the shed until the coast was clear. The engine he heard approach was Edward, and he only found this out after Leonard spotted him near the sheds. Topham then declared that he knew that this wasn't any ordinary accident. There was someone behind this, and he had a hunch on who it was. He didn't tell us, but did mention he had a spotty pass with them. 
Whoever it could have been, they really wanted to ruin everything that he loved on this island as we had our small bonfire. I could hear Thomas and Edward discussing who it could have been. Thomas said it could be Diesel, but Edward told him that Diesel was sent back to the mainland years ago. It was nice seeing someone Edward could talk to again. We've decided to get some sleep early, since we were going to try to meet back up with Henry and the others the next day. Despite everyone's chatty mood, Toby was silent, looking extremely tense. So much had happened in the span of an hour, it's insane. We woke up to Toby having an episode with Fireface, and he sounded like he was fighting for control. He was begging for it to stop and was able to roll himself back and forth, like someone pacing in circles while in deep thought something was going to happen, and I woke up the others. We stood back as Toby screamed in pain, his bell ringing continuously, he was at his breaking point. The voice inside of him were telling him to end it, that he was just a pile of wood ready to rot. Leonard lit Thomas's fire and Thomas slowly puffed towards him. Thomas asked him what was wrong but all Toby told him was to take care of Henrietta for him and then it happened. Topham knew what was going to happen and sprinted towards the tram engine that had taken him out on his holiday trip all those years ago but it was too late. Topham, Sydney, Leonard and I watched in horror as the tram engine rolled back and dashed down the line as fast as he could, slamming his wooden body into the arm of the breakdown crane. Ah! It struck straight into the middle of his face and the sound of splintering wood and flesh was heard as the tram engine fell apart. The arm struck Fireface too and the hook snagged his face and killed it on impact was one of the most gruesome scenes I've ever, ever witnessed. Topham fell to his knees and broke down crying in front of the collapse shell of his beloved number seven. We tried to consolidate him, but he did something none of us expected. He got up and said, Toby, you will be remembered as the great engine you wear, and you will live on in our hearts forever. This can never be allowed to happen again. We will find out who has done this to our beloved engines, and we will be bringing them to justice. I promise you, Toby, your death will not be for nothing. It was a final send-off to a favorite tram before we had to go.